it's Ricky Pood. She's going to LA Galaxy. Can you tell us more about this? It, it has come as a surprise to some. He was one of the most exciting prospects of La Masia uh, a few years ago, but uh, he's one of the biggest uh, disappointments in this last year. It had been years since the likes of Thiago, Cesc Fabregas, Iniesta, Busquets and Xavi had broken through and represented the midfield greatness that La Masia could create. Ricky's abilities on the pitch brought back the itch of nostalgia for so many culés and Man, I can't blame them for that. Born in Barcelona, Ricard Puig Marti, or Ricky for short, joined La Masia at 13 years old and rose healthily through the ranks before making his debut for the first team on December 5th, 2018. From that point on, you could hear Pooch's names being shouted from the Raptures at the Camp Nou pretty much every match. That team was severely struggling under Kike Setien, playing incredibly narrow football and just hoping that the likes of Lionel Messi or Ansu Fati could somehow save them and create some greatness and win matches that way. And many times that did work, but fans were still left asking for more, something that they believed Ricky could offer the squad. He was slight. Agile and fantastic on the ball, pretty much everything that we've become accustomed to a good La Masia talent having. On paper, or at least in the minds of us fans, Ricky could be the difference maker for this team. In the few cameos he made, he was exciting and looked to make things happen. He connected the deep midfield of Rakitic and Busquets to the difference makers in the attack, Messi and Suarez. Ricky made quick decisions incredibly well and was about as press resistant of a player as you possibly could have been. During this time, Cesc Fabregas came out praising Pooch, saying, Ricky can become like Iniesta if coaches trust him. I'm sure he has what it takes to succeed. He just has to have the right attitude and keep improving. However, despite the high praise, he wasn't a perfect player. Kuman criticized him, though indirectly, for not working hard enough to improve, to do what Sesk said he needed to do. There were also times where the team opened the door for Ricky to leave because he wasn't getting the playing time, to gain experience and game time somewhere else where he could make that improvement. But Ricky choose not to. He might have believed that one day he could make it at Barcelona, or maybe he just didn't want to leave his hometown. Either way, he tried to stay and make it happen. But it would never happen for him. See, Ricky, for all the excitement he brought onto the pitch, he was pretty poor off of the ball both in possession and out of it. His spatial awareness was not at the highest level, often occupying the same space as a teammate or not rotating correctly, and he really struggled to press in any sort of effective way at all. Pooch wasn't necessarily lazy. He tried to press, but he just wasn't good at it at all. And on top of that, versatility wasn't exactly his best trait either. He could really only play one position, and that's really not acceptable in today's football. He wanted to play that left interior midfielder in a 4-3-3 or the top of the midfield in a 4-4-2 diamond. That might be okay under some coaches and in some teams if they want to build around you, but that was never going to happen for Pooch at Barcelona, especially when they had Lionel Messi. Looking at the young midfielders that have been successful at Barcelona recently, one of the most obvious traits of theirs is their versatility. In the past two years, Gavi has been asked to play as a winger, interior, and at the base of a double pivot among other positions that I'm sure I'm forgetting. And Pedri is a very similar story. When Xavi came into the squad, his strict positional play needed some versatility from his midfielders, which is why we saw the likes of Pedri and Gavi thrive under him, but the likes of Pooch were forgotten. At this point, it was clear he had to leave Barcelona. Now 22 years old, he either had to get some playing time or his career might have been over. However, instead of going to a lower table Spanish or English club or even a weaker league team like PSV or Benfica where he could still play Champions League football, he chose to go to the LA Galaxy. That's a very interesting move to say the least. The LA Galaxy is not a good team, doesn't have an interesting project like Inter Miami, and more importantly than anything else, is as far away from European football as it could possibly get. Pooch very easily could have followed in the footsteps of Carlos Oleña and Denis Suarez to lower table sides in La Liga where they could try to prove themselves before hopefully making a move to a bigger club eventually. But, Ricky chose something else, something different. Not to say that one is better than the other, but maybe Pooch just thrived in the spotlight. He loved the attention he got at Barcelona and wanted to get something similar elsewhere, so he went to LA where he could be 
the guy. When he made the move, I knew the American fans would love him, not only because he was coming from one of the most famous clubs in the world, but because he is a fun and exciting player to watch. He's also a good-looking and charismatic guy, someone who could be the face of a franchise here in the United States. And that is exactly what the club tried to do. Just look at the Inter Miami vs LA Galaxy game from a few weeks ago. The headline is Lionel Messi vs Ricky Pooch. In what world would we have ever seen that in Europe? That would have never happened if he went to play for the likes of Hitafe and they faced PSG in some weird friendly. I don't care how well he would have played for Hitafe, his name probably would have been forgotten a little bit and not held at the highest of heights like it is in this match. But in the MLS, Less, where they are starved of the very best talent, Ricky Pooch can be that number one guy. However, that doesn't come without trade-offs. Sesk said that Pooch could become like Iniesta one day if he improved. And with the LA Galaxy, he has definitely improved. His final ball is much better, he is a much more progressive passer, and is quite a decent finisher as well. But all of this improvement doesn't really matter, because I don't think it will be taken seriously by a top European side. It's not like he's Zlatan who already proved himself. Ricky failed in Europe, and then he left. I'm not optimistic about the door still being open should he want to move back in the future. He has also not at all improved defensively, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the LA Galaxy don't really give him the responsibility to defend. They were able to build that LA Galaxy team around him, allowing him to really excel at the good things, but not have to improve his overall game completely. Because the LA Galaxy weren't a great team and didn't have a ton of prospects when he came, Ricky was basically given the keys to the castle, so I imagine he can play whatever position he wants. He even takes pens for the side, and I'm gonna be honest, I've watched a bunch of them, I don't think he's great at taking pens. But nevertheless, all this creating a team around Ricky is gonna be another barrier to his entry back into Europe, because no top side is going to build the team around Ricky Pooch anymore. Maybe you could argue that his attacking abilities could slide in for a role similar to Odegaard's at Arsenal or even maybe KDB's at City, but his defensive frailties remain and would keep him out of those sides. In that Inter Miami match, he was walking alongside Messi for like half of the match. That is unacceptable in top level football unless you are the guy. And that's okay because he is good even though the LA Galaxy isn't great with him in the squad, but no top side is going to ever do that to him and I don't think he's going to ever want to go to a team where he doesn't have that. I think he probably likes being this idolized public figure. He had it when he was a kid at Barcelona and now he has it in the MLS and should for the next several years if he stays. With his attacking intelligence only getting better and him still only being 24, he has several years ahead of him to be great. But I firmly believe that if he stayed in Europe, he could have one day played for a pretty solid European side, if that's what he had wanted to do. And that's, that probably wasn't, and it may never be. That makes a little bit of sense too, because it's hard to build around a player, to find the perfect formula of players and tactics to make that work. and. Sometimes that's okay if you have Lionel Messi being that guy, but that's not Ricky Pooch, or at least it's not him yet. Now, I don't want you to think I'm saying he made the wrong choice. He just made a unique one. Players in Europe very rarely do something like this. We saw with Oscar going to China to make that bag almost immediately in his prime, but I think it's being in the spotlight. I think that's what he likes, and you know, it's hard to speculate exactly on his emotions and his feelings, but I think it's telling that he chose to go to the MLS immediately, and I think there is a big reason for that, and I don't necessarily think it was a sporting one. I think he likes the profile that he has, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just different from what we're used to. And I could imagine for a lot of Kool-Aid's, it's upsetting because we wanted to see him break through at Barcelona, but he didn't prove to be that guy or have the ability to pick up that game quick enough. He might have been able to do that if he went to a lower table La Liga side or even went to the Premier League, but I don't think that path is in front of him anymore. Now, big shout out to the purest football. Uh, he wrote an article a few years about the, what happens to Ricky Pooch at Barcelona, and I would not have been able to understand so much about him tactically if it weren't for his article. But if you enjoyed this video, go check out this one about the hunt for the new face of FC Barcelona. It goes through a wild history of Barcelona trying to find the formula to create the next Messi and all their failures leading up to the guy we have now. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.